Today on this episode of Going Deeper, we are continuing with the book Easter Earthquake by James Harnish. We are now in our fourth week of this Lenten podcast series. And this week we have a really fun conversation in store for you where we get to talk about some pretty obscure passages of scripture and some references that you may or may not have heard before. I'm your host, Kyle McCaskill. I'm Katie Clark. I'm Marie Burns. So join us as we go deeper. Welcome back and welcome Katie. Hi. And welcome Marie back into the studio. It's been a minute since Marie's been here. Yep. Katie, this is your first this time. This is my first go. Here and, we go. Oh. I've been prepping. You know? <laughs> We're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm I, excited about it. I am really excited about the potential for what we've got to, to go over here because the readings from this week are inspiring, if not challenging, mm-hmm. and it definitely will make you think and maybe try to process some things in your own life, in your own faith that uh, maybe God needs to work on a little bit. And of course, isn't that the reason why we do things like this? The reason for the season. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Takes on a whole new thing here, doesn't it? (laughs) But uh, what I noticed specifically about this week is the quote at the very beginning of the week. Mm -hmm. I, you know, as soon as I read it, I circled it and I said, okay, we're going to open with this in the podcast. And so here I am going to read this quote from William Sloan Coffin that if you are reading along, hopefully you've already read this and I'll just remind you, there is more mercy in God than sin in us. Just as love is stronger than death, so forgiveness is stronger than sin. Praise God. And Praise. Exactly. Yeah. And that really kind of sets up the, the theme for the whole week. Yeah. And maybe there's a reason why it's the quote at the beginning yeah. of the week. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Harnish well, knew what he was doing. Huh? Yes. And I love the title in itself, mm-hmm. Healing Scars. Yeah. You know, it just brings into the whole, yeah. uh, into account the paradox of yeah. right, the upside down kingdom, mm-hmm. you know, yes. that we talk about. And his scars are what save us. So. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Well, I know, Katie, that you've got a lot of notes in your notepad there. And so I'm going to... I wanted to be prepared, Kyle. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) And so I'm going to let you kind of, for another lack of a way to put it, let you kind of drive the bus here for a second. Let us jump into Sunday. Why didn't you Uh, tell me this? I could have been more prepared. No, but like... (laughs) Uh, th- th- no, see, I'll I've got, you know, I'm going to show you my, my book. Like, oh, I've got one little thing here. And then look you know? at all my highlights. Yeah. <laughs> She's got loads of <laughs> highlighting and everything. No, it's been such a joy getting to work with these folks. Aww. And, mm-hmm. I mean, such God-loving people and hardworking people. And they're, I keep saying, I keep having to pull out my dictionary. They're much smarter than I am. <laughs> Um, anyway, I, I'll try to hang in there today. Uh-huh. No, I, I loved Sunday, the stigmata, the signs mm-hmm. of his mm-hmm. suffering. Right. And it pulls from Luke 24. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just kept thinking about that the disciples had just gone through travesty. Mm-hmm. You know, they had left everything. Right. And it was gone. Mm-hmm. And um, here he is all of a sudden. Yeah. And um, not only here he is, you know, at first they thought, is this a ghost? You know, mm-hmm. yeah. what, what is this we're right. seeing? And, um, you know, I love how Jesus deals with us. Like, he knows our hearts, and he knew that they didn't quite understand. Yeah. So he's like, no, no, it's me. Yeah. Look, here mm-hmm. are my scars, you yeah. know. Right. And um, anyway, they were just in a needy place, and... I know they were mourning, and then he, here's our Savior, and yeah. um, here's the answer that they were not. Mm-hmm. He kept telling them that yeah. they yeah. weren't expecting. Right. So um, yeah. the uh, our author points out that he he could have removed those scars. Why right. why keep them? And for a moment, I I kind of stumbled and thought, 
why wouldn't he keep him keep them? And but I, you know, I guess I get his point of what he's saying mm-hmm. is you know, the God of the universe could absolutely remove the ugliness of what happened, but that our scars, it's a they become a part of who we are, not to define us, but mm-hmm. it, it's part of the story of who we are and how we got where we are. And just as an aside, first century Gnosticism is, was different than what it looks like today. And they taught, after this happened, but they taught that, that Christ was only ever a spirit being. He was never fully human. Mm-hmm. And Jesus is saying, no, here's my scars. And, and I, I hope that as people encountered that very wrong, very blasphemous mm-hmm. information that they can say, no, I felt the scars. He yeah. was fully man. He died on mm-hmm. that cross. Because when you say he wasn't fully man, he didn't die. And that takes away a huge aspect of what happened on that cross. Yeah. And then he took it yeah. a step further and he said, hey, let's share a meal together. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? Ghosts, yeah. ghosts don't digest food. I don't right. Think. No. right. So. And, and you know, I, I like to think that the gospel writers were very strategic uh-huh. in writing what they wrote to who they were writing, to uh-huh. whom they were writing. <laughs> the English teachers are being driven nuts right now. Uh-huh. Uh, grace, grace. You're right. But one of the things that I, I like so much about, you were mentioning the scars, mm-hmm. is and then becoming part of the story, mm-hmm. is if we pretend like the scars aren't there in our own lives, right. then what has God done? Right. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, absolutely. And, and the scars on Jesus are the, let's see, what did I, uh, I had underlined the thing, the unmistakable sign of his suffering and death. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, like, you can't get past that. That tells the story, you know, yeah. that yeah. a significant piece of God's redemption story for us mm-hmm. and for everybody. Right. Yeah. Um, when I was doing some reading, I, the transformed body, you know, we look at scars and we think, Ugly, like right. imperfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, if our kids get stitches, we're like, oh, is the plastic surgeon going to fix that? You know? <laughs> yeah. um, but, but Jesus used his scars in such a loving way mm-hmm. so the disciples would know mm-hmm. yeah. that it was him. Mm-hmm. And they were really trophies of how much he loved this. Right. Like, yeah. We were talking about this morning, you know, we, we did, that was our sin. Yes. That he's bearing. That's right. And um, anyway, he yeah. loves us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They used this modern medical definition at the top of page 67 of the cutaneous evidence of systemic illness. And I balked at first at that. I'm like, it wasn't an <laughs> illness. It was, well, but, mm-hmm. you know, what what is sin? But, mm-hmm. you know, uh, an illness on many different levels of society, of of, of our own you know, broken selves, and he, he did. He carried that mm-hmm. when he got on that cross. Yeah. So. And, I mean, we live in a fallen world, you mm-hmm. know. I loved um, a couple of paragraphs down. He sa- it says, the author says, like scars on the body of the risen Christ, they are irrefutable, like talking about the sin mm-hmm. that's left in the world, yeah. uh, evidence of the systemic evil that infects our human condition and the ubiquitous power of sin that contaminates our individual lives and the cultural, political, and mm-hmm. religious systems of the world around us. Right. Mm-hmm. It's just a reminder, yeah. this is not our home. Right. Yeah. yeah. It is not our yeah. home. Yeah. And it's also a reminder that this isn't the way things were supposed no, to be. no. You know, yes. and but but thank God that we're heading in the direction of right. like regardless of yes. we think you know. Yeah, uh, I remember a, a, a statement from Scott Wright one time. You know, he said, "Oh, somebody asked me, you know, what do you think is going to happen?" He said, "Well, the world's going to continue to go to hell in a handbasket, mm-hmm. and Jesus will still be king." That's like, right. Well, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> And we should not be surprised. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm still surprised when yeah. horrible things happen. Mm-hmm. And, right. um, but that's just, it, it's a part of the, the fallenness of our world. Mm-hmm. And it's a, a continual reminder mm-hmm. that not just me, not just you, not just you, mm-hmm. we all need Jesus. Like mm-hmm. everybody, even the person that you don't want Jesus to love, mm-hmm. he loves. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> well, and it's a reminder too. Um, we'll talk about it on Wednesday, but we mm-hmm. we live in a dark world, and so that's yeah. why it's 
our responsibility to let his light shine through yeah. us. That's right. So uh, some of these questions, I don't really want to necessarily get super personal here because this is, no, you know, for public can, consumption. You can speak in generalities. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but but some of these questions that we get asked, like what are the scars in your life and in our world? And you know, we all have those things in our lives. Mm-hmm. And if if we allow God to use them, then it like we were saying earlier, right. it's a part of our story. It Absolutely. doesn't define you, right? but it is a piece. And, and I, I would say scars are nothing to be ashamed of. Whatever yeah. happened in your past, mm-hmm. you've got to, you have to let that go and move on. And the scar mm-hmm. is the thing that lets, you know, you never forget because you look at mm-hmm. that scar, whether it's, you know, physical or not, mm-hmm. and you remember. But when you look at it, don't just remember the bad thing Remember how you were redeemed through that, Mm -hmm. where God was in the midst of that. Change the way you think about it. It's not the, don't think about the negative, think about how you were redeemed from whatever that was. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I was listening to a podcast this week, um, the one we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's it called? I can't remember right now. (laughs) The um, daily, (laughs) it's a seedbed. Oh, the the, the wake up call. The wake up call. Wake up call. Yes. Uh, uh, plug for the seed bed wake up yes, call. Yes, I love it, love it. It's mm. perfect amount of time. Oh, yes. 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's and they're really doing good. a Lenten study right now. Um, but she was talking about this chi- Japanese art mm-hmm. called Kansuchi. Oh, yes. yes. It's a beautiful mm-hmm. picture of just what we're talking about, how yeah. they use the cracks, they infuse the pottery mm-hmm. with some gold. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And it makes those cracks shine through and so beautiful. And I think yes. that's what she was saying is that's Absolutely. so often how our scars mm-hmm. end up looking. Yeah. And they ended up they end up being the very place mm-hmm. where you see Christ's redemptive work in your own life. That's right. you know? yeah. Well, and it's just the evidence that uh, anybody can make something that looks pretty that's perfect. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But being able to take something with flaws and you know Broken. insert beauty into it. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's us yeah. through and through. Amen. All right. So <laughs> Doug and Michael preached on it mm-hmm. on Sunday. The, I, the really weird passage of scripture. Oh, the snakes. <laughs> Is that the where you're snakes. going? Yes. <laughs> It's Marie's favorite passage. Marie we love is snakes. Snakes. not unlike Indiana Jones. So she hates snakes. <laughs> I blame Lonesome Dove. Mm-hmm. Ooh, You've never yeah. seen it, don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> the snake scene you will not forget. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like a scar in my mind. Mm-hmm. Okay, and yeah. I did research on yes. the snakes. Uh huh. Absolutely. Well, so, and you go to numbers, right? Of course. Do you have that pulled yeah. up? Yeah. And um, mm-hmm. so these snakes, they think, was a, were. Um, the species, they think, were called carpet vipers. Oh. Who strike very, very quickly. Uh-huh. You don't know it's coming. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, ooh, isn't that the way sin usually works? So I'm like, <laughs> oh, that is- yeah, it strikes quick, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it do. Tend to not know you've treaded into the wrong waters yes. until it's too late with mm-hmm. sin. Yes. But, but what an interesting passage, mm-hmm. you know, because I, I've i always thought this one was very interesting because when you, you juxtapose it with the golden calf, mm-hmm. and it's like, well, we've got this golden calf that they're yeah, looking yeah. at, and God says, don't. And get in trouble, but, yeah. But right. now we've got this bronze serpent uh-huh. that God says, hey, look at it. Right. And you'll be fine. Right. That's always been kind of a, like, I don't really get it, I, maybe you had to be there. <laughs> I think it's about obedience. It's, I think it's I, about their heart. Exactly. It's, it's about, and, and that's where I usually come to is like, you know, whenever there's something I don't understand, especially Old Testament, it's right. like, well, obedience. Yeah. Obedience, obedience. and it's probably going to go better for you. Mm-hmm. Well, we, were, we have to remember that God loved first mm-hmm. in the midst of what they were going through. It, he brought them out of Egypt before mm-hmm. anything was asked of them. And they said, oh yes, God, whatever you say, we'll do it. And they, they made that, that pledge and mm-hmm. then they promptly made a golden calf. But, um, <laughs> you know, we all get it wrong sometimes. Yeah. But so um, the, 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 the sin and then the snakes and then the repentance, because this one of the commentators I read said that this was the only recorded instance of them going to Moses, asking for him to intercede. Mm-hmm. There's the repentance and then uh-huh. forgiveness. And so 
God can take anything bad and turn it to something good. Mm -hmm. The cross Mm -hmm. is an ugly, ugly thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. But that is where Christ was. That's where his disciples looked upon him and ultimately received forgiveness, right, for their sins. Mm -hmm. And so, and then... For me, just that the the joy in knowing that that Jesus, you know, will crush the snake under his heel. You're happy yep. with that one. I like that he one. He wins. But 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 I mean, how <laughs> apropos that here's the snake. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The snake was in the garden. The snake is here. Yeah. Christ crushes his head with his heel. That's good. But um, the, 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 I think to me, the the serpent here is a it's it's a representation mm-hmm. of that of that sinful, mm-hmm. those sinful choices we make. Mm-hmm. And there are consequences, mm-hmm. never in a vacuum. You may think your sin is private, but it, it always impacts the people around you. We've got a whole group of people that were impacted mm-hmm. by this sin. Oh, yeah. And you know, I don't think that, I don't believe that God said, oh, I didn't like that, snakes, get them. You know, God has a hedge <laughs> of protection around his people I, and God, just like with the Babylonians and the Assyrians, it's a removing of that hedge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then whatever sinful things or, or bad things that are out there, now they can get in. And when we turn from God and it's us turning from him, not him turning from us, we leave that protection. Mm-hmm. Not to say sinful things don't happen to us mm-hmm. even when we're under his wing, but when we make our sinful choices, we should not be surprised at the consequences that ensue. Absolutely. Yeah. If it's literal snakes or some, something mm-hmm. else. Yeah. You know, and these Israelites, I wish I didn't identify with them so much, <laughs> you know. I mean, <laughs> yeah. but you do have to, they were, they despised God's provision. Mm-hmm. And how often yes. that statement w- that shocked me, and it mm-hmm. shouldn't have, but that at the beginning of that passage in Numbers, they called the manna. Miserable food. Oh yeah, mm. it's like and, so. You would rather be you know, completely starving. I mean, uh, because that one really surprised me. They really are in the desert wilderness here. Oh yeah, yeah. you know that that area. It's not fertile, and, and that's a good reminder too mm-hmm. that God doesn't promise that you're not going to have times where you are totally discouraged. Right? right. You, they are coming, mm-hmm. you know. But the anecdote to that is always trust. Mm-hmm. Gratitude, he is providing. Yes, he will take care of us. Man, you hit the nail on the head there. I That's think uh, if if we come at things not just in our relationship with God, but in our relationship with others, mm-hmm. uh, with an attitude of uh, n- not looking for what's wrong. Yes. yes, you know, look for the good. Yeah, yeah. Look for. The I good. mean. Should I skip to the questions? You, you can go for <laughs> oh gosh, it. Yeah. Now I'm about to confess on. Oh gosh. No. But I yeah. literally because you mm-hmm. said that. Like what? What feel? Um. What snakes of sin slit, slither about in your oh, life? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, a, a critical spirit, a complaining and critical mm-hmm. spirit. Sometimes I just have to stop and say, Lord, change my heart. You mm-hmm. know. Right. And I don't think I go there like intending to. No. You know, it's that slow fade. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. um, before I know it, you know. <laughs> you're one, You're trying to kick people out of your pew in church. <laughs> 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 no, no, I'm just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Last week, Michael preached about, you know. Yes. <laughs> people getting their Places They're taken. Feathers ruffled. Yeah. That yeah. seems to always come up. The <laughs> yeah. churches. We need to just start. What would the pastors say if we just started changing spots? Like, would they know who was there? <laughs> Doug wouldn't. <laughs> Pastor Doug would be lost. He, yeah. he knows where, if we're there. He checks yeah. the pews. He knows. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, that whole, it, it's, let me back up for a second. When things start to creep in, and mm-hmm. the the image of a snake really does work mm-hmm. because yes. it really does kind of slither in, it does. and it's like okay, it's going to come in, and you're not going to know about it, and then yeah. boom, it mm-hmm. strikes. It, it strikes, and you're like, what the heck just happened? Mm-hmm. And and as I've mentioned on, in previous episodes of this one, that it's usually when I am thinking that I know better. Mm-hmm. That's oh, yeah. that's my thing. It's like, oh, I know what I want better than God. Mm. You know what I need. Yes, yes. And that's 
my continual struggle. Oh, same. <laughs> this is why the, the Lenten journey is so important. Mm-hmm. We are in a one of the few denominations that recognizes it, mm-hmm. but I think we often don't really know what to do with it. And this intentional time with God mm-hmm. every day should be a part of our rhythm, but it's not, mm-hmm. I do it at the beginning of the day and now I start my day. Yeah. Right. This is how I start my day. Mm-hmm. This is, if you're listening to God, if you're, if you're reaching for Him, if you're reading about Him in Scripture and you're praying and listening, he really will change your heart. Oh, All you have to do is ask and you'll start to recognize something before it hits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You'll start to feel the feeling welling up yeah. and identify it before it hits mm-hmm. and say, oh, I'm headed in the wrong way right. and I can turn back. But if I have to do it under my own power, I'm gonna fail every time. Every time. Yeah. Well, and we're such doers, you know, we live in such a busy mm-hmm. culture and mm-hmm. we wanna do, do, do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I just love this beautiful illustration of, The people were not saved by doing one single thing. That's right. They were saved Mm -mm. by looking and believing. That's right. um, That's that's later this week. Oh, Uh, (laughs) did I jump ahead? uh, No, there's. there's, We're we're gonna hit that again, and later this week, you did not jump ahead, but uh, but you know, I'm just like, oh wait, I underlined something in my book. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, What's the next day? It's Wednesday. Hmm? Isn't that doesn't that come up on Wednesday? Well, no, were we on Tuesday or Monday? Oh, I, I thought remember. we were on Monday. Yeah, well, you know, Sorry, we're, we're, we're we're moving along. Know, well, the, 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 I love the, the theme. Psalm. I love day three. Day, I Tuesday. jumped ahead. Yeah. That was my fault. Tuesday. That's okay. But yeah, the theme definitely continues mm-hmm. uh, with, you know, because not only do we have the numbers passage on Monday, mm-hmm. but when we've got the John passage on Wednesday yes. after the Psalm passage on That's Tuesday, right. where Jesus references the numbers passage. Right. Which is and so you know, we beautiful. we like John three sixteen, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, but what's going on what's, there? Well, yeah. There there's stuff around it that's yeah. really kind of really deep. good. Yeah. And that was one of my favorite verses is actually John three seventeen. Mm-hmm. Yes. He did not come into the world to condemn it but to save it. Mm-hmm. Um, the one time I did prison ministry and I, I hope that it's not the last time, but we were uh, supposed to be uh, tutoring people, which was the one thing I asked God, please don't, please don't, please don't of have course. me tutor somebody in word problems and math. And guess what they were working on? <laughs> word problems. <Yes. laughs> and I, I'm pretty good at math, but what I don't know what it is about word problems. We just don't get along. And so the guy asked me, what do you know about Jesus? And I said, oh, thank you. <laughs> and I, before I left, I said, John 3, 17. Yeah. Yes, 3, 16. Definitely 316, but 317. He did not come in this world to condemn us, but to save us. Yeah, we messed up. But he got on that cross for us. Yeah. That was not the the end of the end of the story is not my sin. You know, and a side note, as the director of children's ministries here, I've got a little story about that. John 317. Um, I just think it's so important that we teach. That, mm-hmm. that there is no condemnation in That's right. Christ. You know, like they, our kids are going through a time of so mm-hmm. much learning and mm-hmm. consequences. And, mm-hmm. you know, they're answering to a lot of different people. And um, my son went through something. I won't tell the story because I love him, but just a normal <laughs> teenage, well, junior high boy thing. And um, he had to go down to my neighbors to apologize. And I just adore her. And she called, she looked at him and she said, um, you know, I forgive you. There's no condemnation here. Oh. And I mean, how wow. much does that speak to a 13 year old boy who's being real dumb mm-hmm. at the moment? <laughs> um, but he learned such a good lesson, uh-huh. not just like, okay, I need to go apologize, but there is true forgiveness mm-hmm. and there is not condemnation. And mm-hmm. um, anyway, love, love that neighbor. Thankful mm-hmm. for her witness That's, in my I life. I tell you what, you know. The people doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we all need people like that in our lives. Absolutely. And we, we need those experiences to remind us that <laughs> what Jesus did was really okay. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. We should model uh, after him for oh, sure. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Well, and uh, real quick, jumping back kind of into Tuesday, uh, which it's, it's only a real quick jump back, but on page 72, the the author he just kind of said has this line their rejection of God's design for their lives not God's rejection of them mm-hmm. results in suffering and death yeah. and I think that's an important distinction <clears throat> yes. that we need to make 
especially when we read passages like, you know, on Monday's passage, the, the numbers passage mm-hmm. with the snakes yeah. in the desert. It wasn't God that did it. It's what uh-huh. you said. It was yes. my rejection, their right. rejection right. of what God wanted for them right. yeah. that resulted in all yeah. their trouble. Yeah. For yep. sure. Okay. So much of God's will for our lives mm-hmm. is how we act in, a circ- in the circumstances. I think mm-hmm. it's Paul that says that I want to be content whether I'm hungry or full. And in all mm-hmm. situations, I want to be content. If you don't know what God's will is for your life, it's, it's, it has to do, yes, there can be big specific callings, mm-hmm. but a lot of times it's wherever you find yourself, how are you conducting yourself? Yeah. yeah. It's that moment to moment dependence. Yeah, so, you know, absolutely. Not just the quiet time. And then I'm on my way right. for the rest of the day. Where's yeah. my to-do list? Mm-hmm. Right. I, I am a list maker. Yeah. Uh, I am not a list maker, so <laughs> we I admire I, that. I, uh, <laughs> I, I definitely admire that. But Marie, earlier you hinted mm. uh, to it with the the phrase that we don't sin in a vacuum, or you said something oh, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the the question that is posed on Tuesday's reading is: Is when have you suffered as a result of sin? Mm-hmm. And uh, it, to me, it's not just a well, a lot, mm-hmm. but you know, sometimes it's my own, sometimes it's not my own. Mm-hmm. Right, that's uh, right. And it's maybe it's there to realize that oh, there's some people that in my life I need to say, hey, what? Guess what? There's no condemnation. Yeah, that's right. You know that, mm-hmm. that there's forgiveness here. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that does such a work. In I mean, I know we've all heard it a million mm-hmm. times, but it just does such a beautiful work in our own lives when we mm-hmm. offer that forgiveness. You know, anyway. Yeah, the that's beauty, true. beauty of abiding in Him is mm-hmm. that we are able to do that mm-hmm. and not carry. Right. Right. Oh, carrying unforgiveness is a lot heavier than oh, yeah. carrying grace. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, what do we what do we think about the reading from Wednesday? Mm. Oh, that was the painting. Yeah, the reference oh, to the yeah. painting. Oh, Loved and it. we wanted to show the painting, but there were there were issues. We tried. Mm-hmm. Well, and uh, what I'm going to do is in the description notes below the video or in the podcast link, I'm going to have a link to where you can. Find uh, at least a little bit of, more of an explanation mm-hmm. and maybe some pictures because what I discovered looking at this painting and the pictures that I mm-hmm. could find is unless I found something that really zoomed in on the individual pieces, right. yeah. you lost so much of the detail. Yes. Yeah. And so really uh, check that link in the description uh-huh. uh, and that way you can see, which you should be Googling this anyway, but... Uh, check the link in the description so that you can see the painting and mm-hmm. really get the full effect because mm-hmm. there's no way I could show you big enough on no. this screen for you to really get the impact and the weight of what this painting mm-hmm. is trying and to uh, convey. Portray, yeah. yeah. It's Grunwald's crucifixion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I was supposed to say that. Sorry. Yes, absolutely. Not, can no, I, you're good. You're good. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> but I... I um, I thought it was so beautiful. I think art is can just move us in a way that mm-hmm. it, a lot of other things can't. And it's I'm, true. Um, the artist took six years of living in the hospital wow. with those people who were suffering from the effects of plague to complete mm-hmm. that. So I think he was yeah. just like... In uh, in it emotionally, you know. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. it's a sure. hard painting to look at when you, yeah. you zoom in. It's mm-hmm. it's it's ugly in a sense. Mm-hmm. But I mean, so Christ takes on for us. Mm-hmm. Our sin is ugly. Yeah. And he Absolutely. bore that yeah. for us. And so not that these people who were in the hospital had sinned, it's just for for them to be in such a place of pain and suffering and to be able to look upon their savior and see themselves. It's a there's a there's a level of of empathy mm-hmm. and love, I think. That that I my hope is that, and I'm sure it was the the artist's hope is that it it brought a level of comfort mm-hmm. that only Christ can bring. Well, and it, it it offers us an additional example of how we are supposed to reflect what Christ did, mm. because oh, the the phrase that I underlined here in this one is those same scars often become the healing gift they offer to others. Yes, and so like. You, 
the the snakes that slither into your life mm-hmm. and the ones that slither into my life. And uh, as we move on in our journey and we're striving to become more and more like Christ, we're inevitably gonna run into people that struggle with the same things that we do. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And if you know, maybe maybe they're further along than I am, and their scars can help me. Right. And maybe I'm further along in in the the redemptive power and story of of God in my life that I can you know be encouragement and help for them. Absolutely. You know, and I, it's just one more example of how we really aren't meant to do this thing alone. Right. No. You know, the, the the gospel, I said it in week one, the gospel isn't just for me. No. And it's so very often that um, it's those difficult places that God, exactly what you just mm-hmm. said, wants you to minister to mm-hmm. others in that place. You can use it to help others. And um, I know I've seen that in my life. And mm-hmm. I always say when... I try to remind people that are walking through, and myself, walking through difficult times. Is mm-hmm. um, your prison usually becomes your pulpit? And mm-hmm. I looking at Paul, mm-hmm. that's exactly what happened, you yeah. know. And um, that those hard places is where you're going to mm-hmm. encounter God the closest. You be able, you know, your faith in a different way when you right. go through difficult yeah, times. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and we move on now kind of into Thursday, unless there was something else mm-hmm. going on on Wednesday that, mm-hmm. that y'all were, you're just really itching to to talk about. No, but I do love John 3. I mean, it oh, is God. just oh, yes. great. And mm-hmm. Nicodemus, I mm-hmm. love that Christ, you know, he, Nicodemus knew this story. Oh, yeah. And uh-huh. Christ is going, oh, yeah, but I'm going to add something to that mm-hmm. story. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, I think it's just really sweet how our Jesus mm-hmm. just knows us so well and he approaches us in such a personal way. Mm-hmm. Well, and that actually flows perfectly oh, into one of the kind of themes of Thursday mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. that you know God and Jesus really does meet us where we are. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, you go back to the yeah. quote that I read at the beginning, you know, there's more mercy in God than sin in us. Mm-hmm. God's mercy will, you know, I'll use a, a strong word here. God's mercy will attack us <laughs> in our sin if we yeah. let it, you know? Yeah. And so he's going to find us wherever we are in that spot. Mm-hmm. But Marie, I'm going to go again to something you said. We'll get to it on Thursday, uh, the being recipients of it. Yeah. And I like the the phrase that, Harnish uses is that we are passive recipients. Yes. And I I cannot say it enough that we cannot add anything to the work that Jesus did. No. All we got to do is say yes. That's Mm -hmm. right. We are saved by grace through faith and it is a gift. Yeah. Not of ourselves so Mm -hmm. that none may boast. Yeah. The grace and the faith. Mm-hmm. They're a gift. Yep. Yeah. And I love, doesn't he know us so well? Mm-hmm. Because if it were works, we'd be bragging all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We'd be trying to outdo each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I guess that's what the Pharisees were doing, huh? Like, I mean, oh. yeah, it was all about works. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And we should have works, but they mm-hmm. should be the result. They are the fruit of, they're the desire. I've received grace and I can't help myself. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I've got to tell others. Mm-hmm. I've got to show God's love to others. I've got mm-hmm. to tell others of him. Yeah, the work comes next. Yeah, memories of a podcast about the book of James are ringing oh, yeah. in my ears oh, yeah. here. <laughs> sure, <laughs> I hate I miss James. Uh huh. That's been a minute. That's been a long time. <laughs> look, I'm I may link to that one as well. That one was a good oh, one. <laughs> look, this is a great time to go back through Leviticus. I'm just saying. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Not bitten off Leviticus. Uh huh. That's a conversation for a different time. Yes, but yes. yes. We'll, we'll I, I would enjoy that conversation fully. <laughs> so d- anything else? Uh, well, I, I put a star in my book mm-hmm. by the, the poem here mm-hmm. that, that he included. And so I must have thought it was pretty neat when I read it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. I love how he pulls poetry and mm-hmm. art. You know, and music, yeah, he, yeah, he highlights hymns. I yeah. appreciate that too. Yeah, well, and, and one of the suggestions that uh, 
that yeah. Doug gave me was like, oh, you should find a way to incorporate the hymn of the week. I'm like, oh, that would be cool. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Go look it up. Yeah. You, you, should know, talk to the, you should talk to the music leaders about that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just a just thought. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> But yeah, so in in Thursday and Friday of this week, unless my copy is a misprint, we're basically reading the same passage. We two are. Days in a we row, are. Right? Okay. He adds did, one verse. All right. he did you understand verse. the the one verse that was added? No, I didn't either. Because so it's it, half a sentence. I know. Yeah. Is it weird? It's weird. Okay. Yep. So it wasn't just me. No, I st- <laughs> I, I went ahead and just decided he meant to stop at ten. Okay. <laughs> Sorry if I'm wrong. Yeah. Well, you Although Katie read. talked to him. I did. I emailed mm-hmm. him. I can ask him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we're we're friends now. You're, this is one of the things I love about Katie Clark. She had a question about this reading, <laughs> and so she emailed the author, and uh, he answered you. Mm-hmm. He did very yeah. kindly. Well, and since we're kind of in that whole Thursday Friday bit now, mm-hmm. where this question comes up, yeah, you know. L- what did he say? Well, okay, so what was the question? <laughs> what was the, the question? question was, how far along this journey into life and joy are you? Mm-hmm. Which was the question asked in the prayer focus at the end of Friday. Yeah. Yes, and I'm like, I'm, I'm 43 years into this mm-hmm. journey. What, what does he mean? I don't know. I'm very literal. <laughs> Not as theological as y'all. Uh-huh. I'm just no, no, trying. No. You're but good. anyway, he's very kind and um, excited. We were studying this book, but he was um, referring to this uh, fourth paragraph on page 76 where he says, um, now we live in a manner that reflects what God has done for us by God's infinite mercy and boundless grace. Our lives are being reoriented to the new life that is God's gift to us. So he's referring okay. to that new life. And so uh, our gotcha. life of faith. And, um, you know, I, I, what a great question. Yeah. How far along well, into and, this uh, faith journey am I? I, I was thinking hmm. about that this morning, just kind of going through in my own internal monologue, dialogue, I guess, because yes, I talk to myself <laughs> internally. <laughs> Myselves, and now I'm sounding like <laughs> MPD. I'm not. Uh, but as I'm thinking about this, I'm like, well, I'm in the middle. Mm-hmm. I'm in the middle. Yeah. And, well, and I think if we're all really honest with ourselves, is that where most of us find ourselves in the not middle? Not necessarily. Yeah. I, I, I think that well, some people don't find faith until later in life. Mm-hmm. Some of us, some didn't grow up in the church. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, he opens with this um, reference to uh, the autobiographical play, Long Day's Journey Into Night. And the mother looks back in, on her life and says, none of us can help the things life has done to us. They're done before you realize it. And once they're done, they make you do other things until at last everything comes between you and what you would like to be. And you've lost your true self forever. And there are some people who that's how they view life. Mm-hmm. Things are done to me. Yeah. I'm a victim. Oh yeah, and 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 just woe is me, and and angry at life, and am I there? Yeah, mm-hmm. or have I recognized that God is in control, and God doesn't do things to me, and the world, you know, th- life life happens. Yes, sin happens to me from others. I do sin myself, mm-hmm. but grace, but God. Yeah, and it, where am I in that path of moving away from that? thought of victimhood or identifying with things that bad that happened to me? Am I blaming God for that? Or am I moving into his grace and seeing the scars and bad situations as a part of my story and my testimony? You know, where am I in that journey? And, and for some people, they, they, they are much later in life before they find God's grace, mm-hmm. which was there all along. But Well, good point. So, yeah, um, absolutely. I thought the same thing about, it reminded me of Doug's sermon a few weeks ago where he talked about, are you living into a life of salvation where you are the victor? Or are you still the victim? Mm, and um, yeah. Colin and I talked about that. We just thought it was so good because we've been given this gift. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. But you have to take it, you know? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, um, Anyway, so and and I don't think that this journey is always linear, you know. Mm-hmm. No. I think some days it's just like, oh God, how do I get here? It can Here's definitely be circular again. at times. Yes, you know? yes. But we the go round good, and round. I, our 
loving Father is mm-hmm. just no matter where he, we are, mm-hmm. here he is, mm-hmm. the yeah. open arms. Yeah. It does not matter how yeah. far we've gotten. Um, his His grace is enough wherever right. we meet him. So. Right. Uh, and and the, the name for Friday's little devotion is But God. But God. And... I actually spent some time thinking about mm-hmm. this this question that he asks at the very end. You know, how have you experienced a but God moment in your life? And there's tons of them mm-hmm. to oh. me. But I, I, I'm going to share. A, Amy won't mind this. Uh, but just a really quick little uh, personal story from when we were in college and we were just dating and there was an evening that we both got on the phone with each other, my dorm room to her dorm room, and we both had the intention that we were gonna be breaking up with the other one. Mm. And like, it got heated on the phone Mm -hmm. between the two of us. And then something just like God said, zap. Mm -hmm. And we both did 180 degrees and said, well, then, you know, then we're gonna be together forever. Yeah, You know, it's like, it, it, it. from the beginning of this conversation with my thoughts, mm-hmm. my feelings, my will, and Amy's thoughts, Amy's will, and now this is, that was in the, uh, God, that was in 2000. Mm-hmm. So we're in 2024, so 24 years later, mm-hmm. and not only do we still love each other, we still like each other. <laughs> yeah, that's a gift. <laughs> and, and we have effectively been doing some kind of ministry with each other or around each other the whole time. Mm-hmm. And so it's almost like it's this but God where God said, you think you know what you want, but I know what you need. I just need you to know, Kyle, y'all should have just asked me. Amy's my <laughs> sister. I knew y'all were getting married. <laughs> we Early on in their process, mm-hmm. we went on a double date and I got home and mom said, well, so what do you think of this guy? I said, oh, she's marrying that one. <laughs> It was done. I didn't uh-huh. know there was an issue. I could have helped out. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, and so, so, but God and but Marie. Yeah, she knew. Marie. God yeah. talked to everyone. Right. That's all it is. But, but it's, yes, it's I, you know, I was reminded of that moment where, yes. you know, I had my plans. I mm-hmm. had things figured out mm-hmm. clearly, you know, and we were both, you know, seeking God at that mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. You know, we were both active in the Wesley Foundation. We were on the same worship team together, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and so it's not like we were far from God. Right. But God said, I'm gonna bring you closer to each other instead of further apart. Mm-hmm. Well, and in, in my life, I've just seen, I'm just so grateful because I mean, I, I was telling Marie earlier, like, I don't even know, like, I, he's chosen me. And mm-hmm. I, it was nothing I did, but he keeps calling me back. In fact, I keep messing up. <laughs> <laughs> but God, but God. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, keeps calling me back. And I just, his, his grace is sufficient. Mm-hmm. And um, anyway, gratitude. Yeah. That's all I've got. Well, and I, I think the main takeaway from all of this for me, it really is kind of wrapped up in the, uh, oh, it's this quote from Desmond Tutu. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. At the that end. Um, fun little side note I had the chance to uh, provide sound reinforcement for him doing a graduation speech at Berea College in Kentucky one oh, time. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. cool. I, I didn't get to be around him or anything, but it was still you like, oh, yeah, we're setting up a sound system for Desmond Tutu. That's kind of cool, huh? That's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, oh, people actually know some... who this guy is. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, but, but this uh, phrase, or, and mm. I love the repetition that it has in it. Uh-huh. Because it says, has triumphed and will triumph. Mm-hmm. Like, this is one, two, three different times. Mm-hmm. And if we remember that whatever it is, God has triumphed and will triumph. Mm-hmm. It That's is right. this, it's already happened, but mm-hmm. it's still happening kind yeah. of thing. Like, yeah. God has already won. Jesus has done right. what he needed to do then like mm-hmm. in time and space and he's still doing mm-hmm. and will continue to do yeah. in my life if I let him. 
Yes. Moment to moment mm-hmm. dependence yes. is mm-hmm. what I'm learning. Yeah. My, you want to hear my wrap up? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I loved Psalm 107, 133. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. I think it was Tuesday. Mm-hmm. But I had a note in my Bible from another study that says, God to the rescue. And you can tell well, I teach kids. Uh-huh. <laughs> and now I'll read it for us real quick. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Mm-hmm. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story, which is mm-hmm. why I'm so thankful that we got to do this today. Mm-hmm. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands from the east and west and north and south. Mm-hmm. So yep. thank Amen. you, Jesus, mm-hmm. for Amen. gathering me. Absolutely. Marie, do you have any final thoughts? I'm just happy to have been able to do this with y'all yeah, today. Uh-huh. We did it. I, yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> I thought, yeah. way to go, Katie. Yeah. I'm so glad you're on staff with us. Oh, Absolutely. It's been fun. Yeah. Well, and that really does kind of wrap up the, the I guess, this episode here. Mm-hmm. So I'll do all of the logistical things and I'm going to tell the people who are watching that if you're still watching or listening that... Uh, you're not subscribed at this point, you should be. So hit the subscribe button on whatever platform you're on. Hit the like button if you're on YouTube. In Apple Podcasts, you can give five stars. I like to say I think this is five-star content. Oh, yeah. Totally. <laughs> totally five-star. I may mm-hmm. be biased, but you know, you do with that what <laughs> you want. Uh, so whatever it takes for you to interact positively with this, go ahead and do that because it really does help uh, the the different platforms, you know, suggest this to other people who may need it. And uh, as I'm saying that, you yourself can share this with somebody else who you think might need it. So. Um, and also let's invite people to Holy Week service. If you're watching online and mm-hmm. are in the Ruston area, we have a great um, Good Friday oh, yes. service, Good Friday Tenebrae service. service. Tenebrae. Mm-hmm. And, um, Good Friday at 7 p.m. Yep. Yeah, that's and true. And Easter Sunday. Yeah, big Easter Sunday. It's, uh, it it's kind of a big Friday. deal. It's yeah. a beautiful place to be. Yes. Yeah. Well, with that, I'm going to say thanks for sticking with us through this podcast episode, and we will see you next time.